Hey guys, welcome to Charger Games. This is Raja and it's another Unity C Sharp tutorial. So in this video we're going to learn about a very very important topic called coroutines. I know it confuses a lot of people. So we're going to learn that in the video. So let's get started. So first of all, what are coroutines? Coroutines are simply like functions, but in this cases we can also decide if we want to hold for a few seconds inside a function. So as an example, suppose I press space on my keyboard and then I want one of the balls to be destroyed. Suppose I have two enemies, okay, suppose we have two enemies in the scene and whenever I press the space key, suppose I want one enemy to be destroyed at once and then I wanna pause or I wanna just uh, halt the execution for two seconds and after that after two seconds I want the second enemy to be destroyed okay so I want a two second gap between the two tasks that I want to do so in that case instead of creating a function I can create a coroutine and I can put a little bit of gap between those two things okay so first of all we're gonna take a very simple example and we're gonna learn by that how to do that so in order to write a coroutine, first of all, let's name the coroutine. So let's name it coroutine test. And for the return type, you know that in case of functions, we may give it a void or int or something. But since it's a coroutine, so as the return type, we have to write i enumerator. i enumerator is the return type in case of coroutines and then the regular syntax of the function I'm sorry I making some mistakes and then the um, regular uh, syntax of the function so this is almost similar to the function but as a return type we need to write I enumerator okay and as a function we can also pass parameters to it so let's say we're gonna pass a simple parameter int wait time so this will decide how much time we should wait before executing the next task. Okay, so whenever the coroutine starts, what we want to do is we want to print at once. So we want to write debug.log and inside that we're going to write coroutine started. Okay, so whenever the coroutine starts we wanna print coroutine started and then we wanna print coroutine ended okay simple so whenever the coroutine starts we're gonna print coroutine started whenever the coroutine ends we wanna print coroutine ended and between that between that we're gonna wait for two seconds okay or we're not gonna wait for two seconds but we're gonna wait for the seconds which we pass as a parameter here so first of all let's try to wait just for two seconds or three seconds and remove the parameter we're gonna learn about the parameter later so in order to wait for a few seconds we need to write y-e-e-l-d yield new return wait for seconds and inside this you need to pass how many seconds you want to wait okay so suppose I want to wait for three seconds so I'm gonna write 3f so that basically means that I'm gonna wait for three seconds here I don't know why is it getting me error it does not exist in this correct context I'm not sure why is it giving so while return okay there you go <laughs> I'm stupid enough to put new before return so you have to write yield return new wait for seconds I'm sorry I'm really very sorry so what you're doing is you are returning a new instance of the wait for seconds class and inside that you are passing the seconds the amount of seconds that you want to wait so it's pretty simple so what you're doing is you are returning a new instance of the wait for seconds class and inside that you're passing the 
amount of seconds that you want to wait before executing the next task okay so what will happen whenever we run this is that first of all it will print coroutine started then it will wait for three seconds and finally it will print coroutine ended okay now the problem is that how can we start this we have designed this coroutine we have created it but how can we start this in order to start this coroutine we need to just write let's write inside the start function in the start function we need to write start coroutine and as a parameter of it we need to pass the name of the coroutine as a string as you can see here the method name is a string so we can pass the name as a string so we need to pass the name that is go routine test and make sure to name it make sure to spell it right otherwise it will not work so start coroutine will uh, start the coroutine by this way so let me go ahead here and let me put my window console here and now when I run this you will see that instantly whenever I run this this coroutine starts and it will print coroutine started then it will wait for three seconds and after that it will print coroutine ended okay so let's see that in action so if I run it as you can see it says coroutine started then it waits for three seconds and after three seconds it says coroutine ended let's see that one more time started one two three ended okay simple enough so this is how coroutine works now one more thing i want to show you guys is i just told you guys that you can also pass parameters in this coroutine so suppose as a parameter i pass a float uh, wait time so what it will do is this wait time will decide for how much time i want to wait okay so that we can control it by outside we don't to we don't need to wait for only specifically for three seconds we can fast two seconds it will wait for two seconds we can fast five seconds it will wait for five seconds okay so here we will write wait time so whatever we pass as the parameter as the time it will wait for that much time okay so how can we now pass this parameter because whenever we are calling a function you know that inside the function we write the parameter but in this case it is a coroutine so what we do is first of all we write start coroutine then we write the name of the coroutine as a string and then after a comma we pass the parameter so let's say as a parameter I pass 2f that is 2 seconds so this 2f will be passed as a parameter inside this one and then inside this one okay so this 2f will be passed as a parameter of wait time and then this coroutine will wait for this time this amount of time okay so let's see that in action so now it's two seconds and let's see if it works so started ended okay so let's now from here make it five seconds and see that so clear that started one two three four five ended okay so this is how it works now one more way you can start a coroutine is this if you write start coroutine and then if I just press my down arrow key as you can see we have one more way by which you can actually call it we can call it by name and value and we can also call it by writing go routine test and inside that we can pass the parameter that is 2f okay and if we do that and if we run it right now as you can see it starts one two end okay so this is another way by which you can also call the coroutine if we write five here it will again wait for five seconds let's see one two three four five yes okay 
So this is how you work a coroutine works. Now you probably will ask that how can I use this thing? Now you can use this thing in a lot of places as I've given you an example in the first. One more thing you can say is that whenever suppose suppose uh, whenever the player dies in your game you want to bring the restart panel. So whenever the player dies a panel or a screen a new screen will come which will say if you want to replay this game or restart this game or go back to menu now you don't wanna you don't want that screen to appear on after game over instantly so whenever the player dies you may wait for a few seconds uh, show a few animations and after maybe two seconds you show that continue or replay screen there are many examples and many situations where you can actually use this coroutine okay so i hope you guys enjoyed this video learned something i know it's uh pretty confusing and i made few mistakes in the video so thank you guys for watching have a great day if you have any questions just make sure to write those in comments and thanks a lot for supporting me have a great day see you in another video goodbye